Hello, beautiful planet. Hello, incredible earthlings. Hello, radiant empaths of our planet. I am Matt Khan, and it is an honor to be here with you, to offer you spontaneous, intuitive messages channeled directly from the universe. And along the way, answer some of your life's most burning questions. Welcome to a moment orchestrated by the perfection of divine timing. Welcome to a moment created by the love that we are. And just as we begin, whether you've experienced my videos before or you're very new, I offer a transmission of presence, which means as I speak, there's healing energy that comes through the sound of my voice that gives you a chance to experience all of the healing potential that the words are decorating. A healing energy you are always receiving, no matter how quickly or slowly your system takes to integrate it. And so this is healing occurring in real time. This is the living experience of transformation and progress. This is a moment to remember that the transmutations your ego has tried to be in charge of and doesn't think occurs unless it says it's happening or unless it thinks it does everything it needs to do to make it happen can dissolve because you are always transforming and transmutation happens through you not to you and not by you. So this is allowing yourself time and space to come into harmony with the universe, to be a contributor, a participant in co-creation, not a controller of a destiny, always unfolding and well underway. And so when we talk about the ascension of planet Earth. We often are talking about the return of the divine feminine, the ability for the feminine to be honored, respected individually and collectively equal to the masculine. To where the divine masculine plays a central role, the divine feminine plays a central role. And when both are honored equally, those two aspects of polarity merge together, mutually dissolve and give birth, give rise to an awakening of unity consciousness. And so without getting too convoluted or heady about the divine masculine or feminine, let's just talk about simple ways you can bring the divine feminine energy into more of your life. And the simplest way to talk about it is that the divine masculine is the what of action. What am I doing? What is my intention? What is the meaning behind this? What is my focus? What is my hope for an outcome even without being too attached to that outcome going one way or another? But the divine feminine is the counterpart to what? The divine feminine is the how. How will I move through time and space? How will I allow myself to greet those that come my way? How can I love and embrace others as if I'm treating others as the versions of myself that others from the past have mistreated? How can I treat others each day as a course corrective experience for all that I lack or that I experience neglect or abuse from others in the past? How can I rewrite my past by how I treat others around me, even if it's a store clerk, even if it's a barista, even if it's a server, even if it's a stranger, or a co-parent, or my best friend, my beloved, an ex, or a family member? I know it's very popular to talk about the power of now, and I love that teaching. What about the power of how? The power of the divine feminine that says what we focus on, what we pursue, what we move towards, 
what we're trying to accomplish is only as powerful as how you go about it. So a lot of times in the healing journey, we're very focused on what we want to heal, what we want to change, what we want shifted, right? What we, what pain we wish was more pleasurable and what pleasure we hope doesn't turn into pain. But the what is only as powerful as how aligned you are in the feminine. The masculine in its pursuit, in its seeking, in its journey is only as aligned in strength as the divine feminine is in focusing on the power of how. How will I go about this goal? Will I do it with integrity or by any means necessary? Will I wind up being in such a state of limitation that I wind up begging, borrowing, and stealing and actually impersonating the qualities of those I've judged in the past that have taken advantage of me? Am I just going to repeat the past? Or how can I use this moment to say, yes, the what of the goal is important, but it's only as important and it's only as high vibrational and it's only as meaningful as how I approach it. And so the meaningfulness, when we hear that word meaningfulness, what does that word really mean? Meaningfulness means what type of experience will I have in the journey towards something without projecting all the meaning onto just when something outside of me changes or some outcome comes to be. Meaningfulness says I'm taking a journey from this point to that point. And if I focus on the power of how so meaningfully, my experience can be so enriching, so fulfilling, so filled with wonder and awe, curiosity, and innocence. That whether the outcome I actually sought out to embrace, experience, and accomplish, whether that actually happens or not, the how of my journey can be so meaningful that I become naturally detached from whether the outcome I'm exploring happens this way or that way. The power of how is like when you park your car at Disneyland and you focus on how you are taking each step from your car through the parking lot. And if the how is done with such alignment with the energy of the divine feminine, which is symbolized by your heart, if you are so in your heart with every step from your car through the parking lot of Disneyland, you could literally walk slowly each step seeing the rides in front of you, get to the front gate of Disneyland that says, I'm sorry for your inconvenience. The park is closed for upgrades and repairs today. And you can turn back around and walk back to your car in just as much alignment. And yet the disappointment of Disneyland being closed is minimized by how enriching of an experience you had taking a walk from your car through the parking lot and back the power of how. How do I move in time and space? How often do I love myself to erase the memories in the past when others oversaw me, saw through me, ignored me, disregarded me, neglected me, or abused me? How will I start to treat others as versions of myself in the past I am course correcting? by being in the present, what I lacked in the past? And how can I see that the way I interact with life today is like writing a script for how the future characters of my life will treat me? The power of how reminds you how you dare to treat another person today is the script future actors will read from in any version of tomorrow that comes your way. And it doesn't mean to practice that with people that are harming you or manipulating you or disrespecting you. When we're experiencing disrespect and manipulation and toxicity, we have to take space from that. But in other areas of your life, there are people that are safe for you to begin enacting the power of how. And we can practice right now 
how much of this insight will you allow yourself to receive? How much love will you allow yourself to remember and drink in by breathing in this energy? How safe will you remember your heart to be right now? Because safety is not a matter of how other people act or don't act. Safety is how rooted in your heart you allow yourself to be. When we are hiding in our minds, divided from our hearts, we feel the most unsafe. When we allow ourselves to spend more time in our heart, that's when the heart becomes a safer place to be instead of believing the prison of the mind, which is only a prison when divided from the heart, is somehow a safe haven. So in this moment, this is also not just a chance for you to remember and activate the power of how, but to spend more time getting to know the safety of an open heart that is only as safe as the time you spend getting to know it. And all too often in the old spiritual paradigm, the what, what's wrong with me, what's my problem, what's my intention, what's my goal, seems to be at the forefront of our exploration. But in the new spiritual paradigm, it's all about how. How will I allow this healing crisis to bring me into greater alignment, trust, and communion with the divine. How can I see that this moment is manifested only for me to see through the judgments I project onto myself and others? How can I remember that I always get exactly what I need first before I get what I want? How can I also remember that in moments that I want but don't have it, are moments I'm still being prepared to receive it. And if what I wanted was what I needed, it would already be here before I'm aware of that want masquerading as a need. And how can I see through a deeper surrender that not having what I want is giving me a chance to face the feelings, inner projections, judgments, and beliefs that allow me to melt away each wall of an inner prison that will no longer divide me from the beauty and safety of an open heart. And instead of escaping the mind for the heart, we are reuniting mind and heart in holy matrimony. The mind and heart are soulmates. When the meaning and purpose of what falls madly in love, and comes face to face with its beloved, the power of how. Then the what and the how merge together, the mind and the heart collapse into holy matrimony, honeymooning in the paradise of the gut. For when what and how combine, that is when the why of why you are here, why the world is how it is and why everything that you see is only evidence of life moving through an ascension and actually manifesting heaven on earth. But that why will only be known when your what and how merge. And so we already have experience in our life through the most traumatizing moments, hiding in and relying on what. So we already have the what established. We just need to take little breaks and bring more attention to the how. How am I feeling right now? How much love can I give to myself right now? And can I love myself not just when I'm feeling down and not just using love like a fire extinguisher to try to extinguish discomfort? Can I actually ask myself how I'm feeling even when I feel good? and love myself just as deeply when I feel good, love myself just as deeply when I feel not good, and love myself just as deeply when I'm not sure or I'm just okay. How often can I love myself unconditionally and not turn 
love into a modality I only reach for when feeling low and desiring a new high. And can you feel right now? How does it feel to receive a transmission of the divine feminine frequency that I'm channeling from Mother Mary right now? How does it feel to receive the transmission of the beloved mother to balance out your well-established what and to balance it with the power of how? Just feel how you feel in your body. This is you receiving the energy before your ego has a chance to do something right or fear it's going to do something wrong. In the comments, how does this feel? Wonderful, Janet says. She says, I'm so grateful for your love for the world. Thank you so much, Janet. I love you. Elias says, love. I love that, Elias, and I love you. With all of my heart, I love you. Andra has a heart. Sandy, it feels like a big warm hug. It does. Comforting, says Alicia. Feels so good, says Carol. So again, let's continue with this transmission. And then we'll take a few questions, but let's just continue for it with a few little nuances. Your ego will always focus on what? Or it will ask why before the what and the how have combined. And when your, your ego is asking why before what and how have merged, the why is always done as a question that's only created to create self-defeat in you. Why am I feeling this way? Why don't people see me? Why do they ignore me? Why don't I matter? It's amazing that we can ask questions that we think require answers, but we haven't seen that we've created a pattern of self-manipulation where we've been trained societally to ask questions that do nothing but create inner damage, self-defeat, and put you in a mindset where you assume there are answers to those questions. Those kind of why questions don't get answered. All they're designed to do is to keep you looping and self-harm. So asking why is a distraction from balancing the what with the how. Why is never a question you ask from a state of victimhood. Why, when asked from a place of pain, is only a way to keep the pain deepening and circulating. What gives you space from pain, what gives you respite from the domination of the what is how. Not why is this happening? Because that's your ego thinking, if I can figure out why it's happening, I can also be in charge of figuring out how to make it unhappen. That's control. How? How will I serve myself in this moment of despair? How will I support myself whether I'm clear or confused on my life purpose and life direction? How can I actually see that being more aligned with the divine while not moving forward is more important than moving forward out of alignment with divinity? For you could spend all day and night checking what's off your list, what to do, what to think, what to focus on, what to prepare for. You could focus on checking all the what's off your list. And if it, doesn't, if it wasn't done with an aligned how, all you've done is train your ego to do a bunch of busy work that will not amount to anything tangible, meaningful, or fulfilling. And then you'll get disappointed and more likely that you'll blame the universe or blame God instead of seeing you're in the right place, you're in the right time just exhausting a broken system that was only designed to break apart so that the one hiding in what can come out of hiding and find true relief in the power of how. So take a moment right now and ask yourself, 
if you've been too focused too much on the what or lost in the self judgment and the self defeat of why what is the best how question you can ask yourself right now so that instead of looking at moving forward externally just in this moment how can you move forward internally not moving forward in a forward direction moving forward in an upward direction into greater connection with the divine what is the how question that will bring you actually the relief you seek not a question you need answered but a question that gives you a break from the what and freedom from why in the comments what would the how question be for you how will you activate the power of how because the power of how is not about creating a how question and answering the question the question itself frees you from the what and the why so we're just looking at having space from what and why through how so what is the question that of and framed in a how whether it's how can I love myself more in this moment it doesn't mean you will love yourself more in this moment how can I love myself more how can I support myself better how can I find peace in each moment and as you're writing these questions please remember your how may I serve the divine that's a perfect one I love that how do I stop being a victim I would reframe that and say let's not put stop in the question let's look at it as a positive affirming sentence so if it's how may I stop being a victim I would say how may I see this moment from a deeper space of clarity how can I see this moment is actually for me but I love that we're working through it how can I connect more deeply to my soul how can I have more clarity in which direction I should go how can I embody more of my soul this is perfect how could I accept what is I love that so here's here's the next step of the power of how your ego will believe that its job is to answer the question your ego will believe its job is to look around and to find a way to answer the question but if you answer the question conceptually you make the question go away if you make the question go away you no longer have the power of a question so the ego believes questions are linked to answers in reality your relationship to question allows you to remember yourself as the only answer in existence so the right question is giving you a chance to spend more time with yourself as the answer not as a character trying to match questions with answers so when we say how do I love myself more or Michelle says how does this experience have value to me how can I find peace in every moment that's not your goal because then you go out of the how and back to the what and you go back into the unconscious masculine by sitting with the question you're actually asking the question of the universe that you are one with and you're allowing the bigger you the universe to answer it through you you are using the question to surrender to higher guidance and higher guidance immediately starts to bring the answer through you and as you as an energetic encodement an energetic upgrade whatever clearings you need integrations you need and expansions you need the universe begins to deliver it right through you so that you can become the answer not the person seeking the answer how do I keep my absolute belief in source in hard moments Hannah that's a great question but that's also we remember that's not a question that your ego will try to answer by trying to become spiritually perfect that's the illusion so when we so we use the question as a question we ask of source when we ask the question of source we then have to trust in the perfection of divine timing that the moment you ask the question the answer is already starting to either trickle in or pour in depending on your level of awareness and you are then going through a process of becoming the answer not someone trying to find the answer or perfect a process that solves the answer or becomes the answer solves the question rather so we're using the question to pattern interrupt the unconsciousness of what and the victimhood of why how can I see that this 
moment is only asking for more love. It doesn't mean it's your ego's job to love itself. It doesn't mean it's pressure on your shoulders to love more, not less. It's, it's your invitation into the power of how to ask the universe within you, how can I love myself more, not less? And then instantaneously more love instead of less love starts to pour through from the heavens. And you become the answer to the question. Not the person who thinks it's your job to take question and find its answer. Just feel that. And it says, so how do I become peace in every moment instead of find peace in every moment? By asking the question, how do I find peace right now? On behalf of Anna, let's try this together. And, let's, and, and we'll do it as a repeat after me, and we're going to do it five times. And I just want you to feel what happens in your body. How do I feel peace right now? 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 Now, let's be honest. How many of you feel more peace just saying that question out loud five times? See, we're using questions to tell the universe what we give permission to activate. I'll show you in a different way. Repeat after me. How can I love myself more, not less? 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 Did you feel the energy flood your heart? It went from the vibration of peace to the vibration of love. Did you feel that? All we did was ask the question out loud five times slowly, and the universe answered as you. The question is where the power is, and you've been trained by an old spiritual paradigm to think all your questions need to be turned into answers. But that's turning away that's turning you away from the power of the Divine Feminine. And I want to be here to turn you back towards the power of the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine can manifest different experiences just by asking the right question. Feel this. Let's try a different one. How can I know my true abundance? 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 Know my true abundance? And what do you feel energetically? Do you feel an even deeper ping of elation in your heart? Do you feel a, a, a profound stillness when asking the question of abundance? And so that is the vibration of abundance saying, be still and know it is always within you. For what is always within you is always ensuring you are always taken care of. In every moment, you always have exactly what you need to get from one moment to the next. But to know abundance, not as external circumstances, but that it begins as an internal vibrational frequency, you enact the power of how to frame a question about how. The how question is about the very vibration you want more experiences with, and you ask the question five times out loud and begin to feel its frequency. See? The old paradigm said, questions need answers or you're incomplete. That was only true for the time spent in the third dimension. But we're now in the fifth dimension, and the fourth dimension is the time it takes to move from one to the other. In the fifth dimension, you are the answer, and we use the power of questions to connect into greater alignment with the universe through the power of the Divine Feminine. And through the power of the Divine Feminine, 
we're not looking at what we can do to always make external changes. We make immediate external changes if there's abuse and turmoil and trauma and toxicity. But from an alchemical point of view, from alchemy, the laws of alchemy, you ask a question that starts with how. How can I? How may I? And then you f add in the vibration you want to have more experiences with. And you ask that question out loud five times. And you immediately feel your co-creative relationship with the universe answering by pouring that frequency in. I'll show you again. How can I feel the bliss always within me? Immediately felt the energy go whoop. How can I feel the bliss always within me? How can I feel the bliss always within me? How can I feel the bliss always within me? How can I feel the bliss always within me? And you feel like maybe from the back of your head up, it's a lifting energy. It's a high vibration bliss. It's a heightened state. It's not a state you're going to feel 24 hours a day. It's an elevated state. But you can start to get to know the frequency of it by enacting the power of how. Let's try it with self-realization. How can I know the divine as I am now? How can I know the divine as I am now? Feel your body tingle. How can I know the divine as I am now? How can I know the divine as I am now? How can I know the divine as I am now? And you could probably feel from the tips of your fingers touch your entire body, a vibration, a warmth. You're feeling your energy field come alive as the divine that you are. And you're literally getting an experience of the frequency. Now Sue says, how can I tap more into my feminine energy? Be careful with that question because when you say, how can I tap into more of my divine feminine energy? You're almost asking the ego to learn how to do it. So let's see, let's, let's, let's try this together and we'll try it all together. How can I remember the divine feminine I am? How can I remember the divine feminine I am? Feel it. How can I remember the divine feminine I am? Feel it. You can already feel it. Now let's even, let's even change the question to balance. How can I balance my divine masculine and feminine? How can I balance my divine feminine and masculine? How can I balance my divine feminine and masculine? How can I balance my divine feminine and masculine? And you feel how it's evening out now? See, we're just literally seeing that we can command divine, we can, we can command, easy for me to say, vibrational frequency doesn't mean we can control it. It means we're calling upon these vibrations to get to know them, to make them more familiar, less foreign, which means it's going to occur more often in our reality, which then means we get to know these vibrations and we begin to create more of an identification with the qualities and characteristics of the divine I am, which means there's a greater likelihood that you're going to hold that frequency and be able to speak and act from that frequency around people who aren't aware of their frequency. And so this is part of our alchemy training. And as I'm here with you in this transmission, I want to, I want to announce something that some of you know about starting in October. I believe October 10th is the first date through most of the month of October. I will be on the East coast of the United States going through a tour on some dates of the tour. And there's a link in the top comment on this video. When you see the tour, you'll see some dates I'm doing an evening event followed by the next day with a longer event. 
and I'm going to many cities in the East Coast. Now, as far as tour-wise, this is the only tour I'm going to be doing until next fall. And so this is an opportunity to come and experience this profound transmission of presence live and in person. And there's so many of you that are coming from different countries and states. And we wanted to make the events. A lot of the cities have two-day events. So that when you come and visit the city, it's like you're experiencing a mini retreat with me in person. And of course, all the teachings I'm going to be offering, like this teaching. This teaching wasn't planned. None of my teachings are planned. It's all spontaneous for the people who are here live and who will be watching it, as you may be watching it on YouTube. And every date of the tour, I'm going to do spontaneous teachings only for the people live and in person and for those that can't be live and in person who will be watching on live stream. And at each of these cities and in each of these transmissions, I'm going to do unique teachings. I'm not going to repeat anything from the past because I never do that. All new teachings. And most importantly, the reason I created this tour with my team is because I've channeled from the universe a brand new karma clearing process. And in every city, I'm going to take you live and all participants through a radical new karma clearing process to clear familial karma once and for all, ancestral karma, societal karma. And we're also going to do a process to clear the karma of every city and to reduce the karmic patterning of each city that the event is taking place in. And this is an opportunity to step deeper into learning the divine laws of alchemy, to learning how to not just activate the law of manifestation, that's one universal law, how to actually be a co-creator that's rooted in alignment with the divine, not using your ego to try to control time and space. And a lot of us will say, like on this video, you're learning about the power of how, and you're learning, wow, I didn't realize how to use a question to actually activate vibrational frequencies. And there's a lot of us that have learned from the old paradigm that there's all these things in your way or all these distractions you have to work on or all this busy work. And you've been hearing me in these new videos talk about there's going to be less and less spiritual busy work and less things to work on. So I created a tour to help you clear all the patterning and to clear all the distractions so you can focus your spiritual journey on how to be a master alchemist instead of having an endless spiritual to-do list. So if you are in your heart resonating with clearing personal karma, familial karma, ancestral karma, societal karma, not only to enact the tipping point for humanity, but as a way of bringing you into the highest timeline of fifth dimensional reality now, right now, then please join me in person on my upcoming tour. There's a link at the top, you know, the, the top comment on this video, and it will take you to a page and it will show you all the cities and you can watch on live stream. You can come in person. You can come to one city, all cities and have the live stream. This is our time to come together and to do the most radical healing work and no longer make the state of humanity the excuse for why we feel the way we feel. We are the empaths of the world. We are the way showers of humanity. And it's time that we stand up, take our place and lead the way. We all have a part to play and we are leading the way for the world that is waking up at a radical pace. So please join me for the upcoming tour. And let's now take some questions. Everyone seems very excited about the tour. I'm excited about the tour. And here's another exciting thing about the tour. I get to go on tour with my soon-to-be wife at my side. Joy's going to be with me every step of the way. We're going to be going to cities. We're going to be helping to bring healing to the planet. And she and I get to do it together. I'm so excited. So please join us. Please join my beloved and I for this most incredible tour. And as you all know, incredible means incredible. And someone asks, are you going to the West Coast? Yes, next fall I'll be in the West Coast. So this fall, October is East Coast tour. Next fall will be West Coast tour. But please come to do the karma clearing because I'm not going to probably do the karma clearing in the West Coast because by then I'll have downloaded 
I download five new teachings a day at least. So by the time I get to next fall, I'll have new processes to teach. So either come to the East Coast and join us in person, which is the highest possibility. And if for some reason you can't make it to the East Coast, buy the live stream so that you have a chance to experience this process. I do processes, but because I channel such new processes every day, it's like they disappear. So this is a chance to experience it for yourself and to bring these gifts into your life and to take the biggest evolutionary leap so that you don't have to spend your day doing 10,000 modalities and not feeling like you're making any steps forward. I want to personally be responsible for helping you remember and see how to take the biggest radical leaps and how to move out of managing and coping with the difficulties of life and move into the divinity that's always shining brightly inside of you. So please join me for this tour. With that in mind, Jessica says, see you in Boston. I'll see you in Boston, Jessica. Joy and I both will. Let's ask some questions. Mary says, how can I manage to get myself there financially and physically? It's a great question. It's magical how when we set the intention that says, universe, please bring me the resources to be where I need to be on this tour. There are so many that come to my events that say, Matt, I wanted to be here. I knew I was supposed to be here. And literally the floodgates of the universe opened and made it happen. So every single one of us can make this happen. Let's come together in person and let us radically shift and clear karmic patterns so that we are shining the light for the world, not just drinking and eating what the world is transmuting. So let's see. Brent says, Matt, you said there's a certain amount of time you are meant to spend in specific personal conditions of various states of consciousness. Is this so that we can align with source before we move forward like you transmitted today? Each of us are meant to spend certain times at certain emotional states. But what we first have to transform is our relationship with those emotional states. A lot of us have actually already spent enough time with certain emotional states, but because they define parts of our identity, we just are keep circulating and swirling. And so when I do the karma clearing that I'm going to do on this East Coast tour, it's actually to clear the patterns that keep you identifying with negative thought patterns that keep you identifying with negative emotional patterns. So there's a lot of us that are super aware, but still somehow in the subconscious identify with negative thought patterns, negative belief patterns, and negative emotional patterns. What I call karma clearing is clearing out those negative thought patterns negative emotional patterns and negative belief patterns out of your identity. A lot of, there's a lot of modalities that help you clear things, but it doesn't clear the identification. It doesn't clear the identity. And so if I help you through a karma clearing to clear the identity, then all of the emotions you've already spent enough time with just kind of fall away. And we can still have a positive relationship with all feelings. We just don't need to swirl in these patterns anymore. So there's nothing wrong with healing modalities, but the downfall of many healing modalities is they clear the top layer of the emotion, thought, or belief, but they don't go down to the root of the identity. And so it's kind of like clearing the top layer, but the roots underneath grow another layer and it becomes very self-defeating. So on this tour, we're going to clear the identification with negative thought patterns, beliefs, and emotions so you can actually literally feel yourself in a brand new dimension. So, Brent, I hope that answers your question. And thanks for asking so much. Anna says, yeah, stop the cycling. That sounds amazing. So before we bring today's video transmission to a close, let's just experience more of this power of how. Let's actually remember that a question is not always seeking an answer, but that leaning towards answers is a way of running away from a question. The first thing we need to remember about a question is if it does not begin with how, it is by and large a form of defeat. There might be a what that might be helpful, but when you, even when you have a powerful what question, what is my purpose, what am I supposed to do, about this situation. 
The way you allow the answer for the what to arise is by turning the what into a how. How can I best support myself right now? How can I connect more to my divinity right now? How can I use this moment as a chance to surrender into greater faithfulness with the divine? How can I make this less about what I need to do and more about being the space for the divine I am to do it all through me? And just to have another experience of the power, of what I'm calling the power of how. Let's try a very powerful one. How can I be as I am right now? How can I be as I am right now? How can I be as I am right now? How can I be as I am right now? And do you feel like your face is melting? It's being melted by the vibration of beingness. The question of how can I be as I am right now already contains the answer of as I'm asking the question, I'm also becoming aware that I am being myself as I am right now. And you're getting a chance to entrain with the vibration of beingness. Now we'll do one more. How can I do all that needs to be done without feeling in charge of it? How can I do all that needs to be done without feeling in charge of it? How can I do all that needs to be done without feeling in charge of it? How can I do all that needs to be done without feeling in charge of it? And do you feel how it balances out that beingness? And there's an there's a, a energy that can take action when action is needed. But you're feeling that all the doing is coming from the higher aspect of your divine I am. It doesn't need to come from the lower self. It comes from the higher self. And the lower self is only called the lower self because it's divided from the power of the higher self. Feel this. One more, just to make this even more powerful. How can I get to know the higher self I am? How can I get to know the higher self I am? How can I get to know the higher self I am? How can I get to know the higher self I am? Feel that and feel perhaps either something you felt before, something that's always been in the background, or maybe for the first time, the higher self that you are, not what you're in control of, the higher self that is the one that you are. And if you're ready to put the old paradigm busy work, to put all fear and superstition and lay it to rest, and to say thank you to the old paradigm but I'm ready to explore my light instead of having endless darkness to clear out of my field. If you're ready for that shift, and if you're ready to get the heck out of dark night of the soul and start entering into the higher realms of heavenly light and to experience a radical, tangible shift that brings you out of a world of symptoms and into a universe of greater support, alignment, and fulfillment, then please join me for my Healed by Love East Coast Tour. Please follow the link at the top comment and reserve your seats for both in-person and live stream. And let us clear the karma that allows us to release all identifications to the past, all identifications to suffering, that allows us to empath our light instead of be attracted subconsciously to other people's darkness. This is our time and it's time for the entire world and we're doing it for the world and we're doing it for the light of divinity. So please join me in October and thank you for receiving this transmission and having an experience. The radical power of the divine feminine that is balancing out and bringing to life the divine masculine to activate the alchemy of your highest reality now. I am Matt Khan, loving you infinitely, bowing in your presence. It is an honor to serve you. I look forward to being with you in person very soon. 
Namaste.